Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel. So back on with uh, Panagali Energy Swap Project. So if you remember from the uh, last video, we got rid of the exhaust system and the radiator packs and a number of odds and sods around the engine. Um, today, hopefully, going to be getting on to removing the frame from the top of the engine and the swing arm. So that hopefully, by the end of this video, we will just have the engine sat on its engine stand and then it will be a case of just prepping the two engines. So taking the last remaining components off of this one, swapping them on to the replacement engine and then from then on start building back up. So anyway, let's get on with this. Okay, first task for today then. So we're going to remove the rear shock assembly, the linkage, and then also the bracket that holds the whole assembly on the side. So first things first, we need to take this bolt out of here. Is to take off this bolt here that holds the main bracket on and loosen off the pinch bolt for the swing arm support for the left hand footrest bracket. Okay, let's do that. The last bolt we need to do, which is buried deep inside here, is the swing arm linkage bolt. It's holding in the linkage arm that sits between the shock bracket and the swing arm, so just need to get that one off as well. Okay, now carefully supporting the shock, we're just going to pull that whole assembly off of there, so there should be nothing holding this in place now. I'm just supporting the swing arm on a piece of wood so it's not metal to metal. So the next piece we need to get out of the way is the chain guard. So you've got one bolt, two bolts, three bolts, so let's quickly just buzz that off. Okay, with chain guard out of the way, what we need to do is just buzz the front sprocket off. So, just gonna take that bolt out of there. Okay, next job to do is to take out the left hand swing and arm support. So, there's a hex. Um, which you may or may not be able to make out inside there is a, a hex on internal fitting which that will fit into and let's just buzz that off and that's the uh, hex fitting you can see that that fitted into and the bearing surfaces that the swing arm bearings run on. Just going to come back onto the right hand side of the bike. And if you remember, we loosely put that back in. And then, same job again, we just need to take that swing arm support off. So interestingly, my tool is not long enough to reach through from this end, but you've luckily got enough space to do it from the back end because the tool goes all the way through. So I'm just going to fit the tool here so I can just whiz that off from the back end. Okay, the camera fell off there, so <laughs> apologies for that. You missed the last bit, but that's now completely out. So what I'm going to do is just remove the swing arm away. Okay, so you can see, now the swing arm's off, you can see where the swing arm gets held on the back of the Panigale engine. So you've got these two brackets which have been threaded. 
not a great deal of meat there's web in there but it's not uh, a huge amount of support in there so you can see between the shock and the linkage and these two points here there's um the engine's effectively acting as a stress member i suppose really but yeah that's the swing arm off next piece as we get closer to being able to remove the frame is we've got to remove the front uh, wiring support that's secured to the horizontal head um, you probably can't see it very clearly but there's two bolts just inside here one here one there so let's just loosen those off i'll also unclip the horizontal cylinder ht lead and plug cap okay let's do that now. Okay, moving on to the next step now that we've removed the electrical loom carrying plate from the horizontal cylinder. Um, the manual made again an assumption that you had your ABS system out of the way. So it was only three bolts that I had to take off to get it out. So one, two, three. Um, and I've just tied it up out of the way there. So literally take that bracket off and the whole assembly comes off. Now that would be slightly different on your bike if you're following me because I don't run the ABS so none of the brake lines are connected to it, it's just the body because there's no bypass facility for it. What we've got to do then is we've got to take off these breather pipes, one for the uh, horizontal cylinder just here and one for the vertical cylinder. So I'm just going to quickly pop those off. next pipe to remove is the crankcase breather which has got like a once only clamp on here I can never never remember what they call these off the top of my head so I'll quickly just get that done as well and then following that I'm just going to quickly remove the suspension mount so one bolt two bolts three bolts and then just pull that away as well Next is the gear change lever, so we've just got to undo this little pinch bolt here and that will just slide off. Blow by pipe. Okay, next job is to start disconnecting uh, our injectors. So connection needs to come off and then this connection down here just take the uh, air box seal off next step is to take the injectors off so clips first So now we've just got the throttle bodies left in there with their looms and everything connected and the main, main fuel pipes. Okay, challenging part now. We're gonna take off the four retaining nuts that hold the frame to the engine. One here, one in there, one right down the far base there and one just down there so let's get those loose so they use 12 point sockets so you've got to have a 12 point socket to be able to get those off or the Ducati special tool There you go, so the frame and all the front end and all the wiring and everything that we've been working all this time to take off has just been moved out in its entirety. So no, no issues there at all. I've just still got it on the front wheel, just prompt it up against the wall, against the cupboard and stopping that from rolling back. And you can see that we've got the throttle assembly basically left on the bike, sorry, not the bike because we're just looking at the engine. 
you've now got you've now basically just got the throttle assembly left on top of the engine so basically the frame nuts come with these once only washers which we're going to have to replace when we put the bike back together so I've got to get a new set of these for the bike because once they've been used you can't use them again obviously with such a critical um, fixing it's not worth cutting corners last job to do on the outgoing engine block is to remove the throttle bodies so there is one two uh, three four five six seven and then deep down in there again eight bolts to remove so I'm just going to take those off now there you have it so once those four bolts were undone on the throttle bodies, they, the whole assembly just picks up, as you can see there. Um, they are loose to the base, but relatively straightforward to remove that. So, that is effectively the engine removed in its entirety. What I'm gonna do now between uh, today and the next video, is I'm just going to start swapping over some of the little uh, engine component pieces that I need just so that um, it makes the engine swap goes a bit easier so I need to swap over the neutral switch because the leads broken on the other one I need to get the oil cooler switched over we've got the exhaust support bracket that needs to come off and then I'm also going to clean also going to clean the uh, 1199R engine before I put it in so a little bit of bougie down of that just so that everything's in a known position before we go to put it on the bike and then this one will be just off the bench out of the way I'll have the 1199R engine in there ready to go for the next video okay before we sign off on this video then I've just um, this evening cleaned up the replacement engine so this is the 1199R engine um, and it's not in too bad nick so you'll see this is one of the components I was referring to that I need to change because the connection has been damaged or gone missing. I need to get some new exhaust gaskets to place on there. Um, I've got some odd fittings on here that weren't on the S engine, so I think these were a modification, so I just need to take them off. Then I need a replacement oil cooler seal and then new exhaust gaskets and then the washers that I was talking about for the frame so there she is the 1199R engine um, ready for us to start rebuilding the bike bat up okay that's me finished with taking the bike apart 1199R engine nice and cleaned and ready to go uh, in the next video we'll start putting it all back together so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did can you chuck us a like down below uh, and if uh, you've got any questions or comments, then also feel free to ask down below and I'll get back to you with an answer as soon as I can. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, we'd really welcome you as a subscriber. So hit that button and uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell beside it for the notifications. Uh, plenty of content still to come. Hopefully within the next week or so, assuming that all the parts turn up in time, we'll start getting this back together. So we'll be reversing the process of taking the bike apart. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers for now. Bye.